We're already seeing the effects of climate change in the form of rising seas, monster storms, wildfires, and extreme weather. If we stay on our current path of not reducing carbon emissions enough, things could spiral out of control, leading to irreversible, long-lasting effects on our planet. But now, this scientist and this material may be one answer to the global warming problem. Inside Science TV. Literally for the last 20 years, I have been working on how to balance the world's carbon budget. Our problem is we burn a lot of fossil fuels, and ultimately if you burn fossil fuels, you make carbon dioxide, and that carbon dioxide ends up in the atmosphere. And the problem is it stinks. Many years ago, the world was relatively stable at 280 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That means carbon dioxide consisted of about 0.02% of the Earth's atmosphere. Sadly, we have ramped up levels quite rapidly since then. Today we are at 400 parts per million and we are going up by more than two a year. So 450 is by now about 20 years away. That means we're up to about 0.04% of CO2 in the air. But that doesn't mean we can't get it to reasonable levels. Klaus Lackner at Arizona State University thinks this material that looks like white shag carpet could help lower CO2 emissions. We are working on the problem of pulling CO2 back out of the atmosphere. And one critical ingredient in that is that we have a material that can absorb CO2 out of the air. So we thought of this like a synthetic tree, an artificial tree, a material which has leaves. And as the air sort of blows over these leaves, it binds to it. Our big surprise was how much it binds depends on how dry it is. The drier it is, the more it likes CO2, the better it binds. The plastic material is naturally good at absorbing CO2 from the air. And the neat thing is, it can be reused. So the whole cycle could look like this. Absorb CO2, rinse it, collect it, and repeat. And what happens to the carbon dioxide after it's absorbed by the material? You either find another use, or you have to dispose of it. Some of those possible uses could include things like biofuel production. So we collect the CO2 from the air and feed it to the algae, and then you can make biofuels out of the algae. Why do we need this material? Don't trees absorb CO2 from the air? Why not just plant more trees? Because if you just grow as much as we have, nothing much changes. You end up needing more agricultural land than we have right now in use in order to make this happen. We collect CO2 roughly a thousand times as fast as a real tree. Lackner is committed to using the material to help achieve an 80% reduction in carbon emissions by the year 2050. And even that might not be enough to balance the carbon budget. But it's much better rather late than never, right? Because the, the alternative is that we discuss this for another 50 years and then the problem is twice as big as it is today. Learning by doing doesn't happen unless you do. This is Inside Science. Inside Science TV. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.